This is what I find most magnetic about successful givers. They get to the top without cutting others down, finding ways of expanding the pie that benefit themselves and the people around them. Whereas success is zero-sum in a group of takers and groups of givers, it may be true that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The most meaningful way to succeed is to help others succeed. Focus attention and energy on making a difference in the lives of others, and success might follow as a byproduct. Highly successful people have three things in common, motivation, ability, and opportunity. A hallmark of wisdom is knowing when it's time to abandon some of your most treasured tools and some of the most cherished parts of your identity. If we want to forecast whether the originators of a novel idea will be successful, we need to look beyond the enthusiasm they express about their ideas and focus on the enthusiasm for execution that they reveal through their actions. Changing your mind doesn't make you a flip-flopper or a hypocrite. It means you were open to learning. Focusing on results might be good for short-term performance, but it can be an obstacle to long-term learning. I think of productivity as using your time to accomplish things of value to you and others. It's ironic that when you go through a tragedy, you appreciate more. You realize how fragile life is and that there are so many things to still be thankful for. The more I help out, the more successful I become. But I measure success in what it has done for the people around me. That is the real accolade. Strong leaders engage their critics and make themselves stronger. Weak leaders silence their critics and make themselves weaker. The most effective leaders score high in both confidence and humility. What distinguishes the greatest leaders of our time, it's that success is very rarely a goal for them, it's a byproduct of other goals that they have. And they act in the face of risk, because their fear of not succeeding exceeds their fear of failing. Rather than looking outward in an attempt to predict the outcome, you turn inward to your identity. You base the decision on who you are, or who you want to be. A good debate is not a war. It's not even a tug of war, it's more like a dance that hasn't been choreographed. To get real diversity of thought, you need to find the people who genuinely hold different views and invite them into the conversation. Dissenting opinions are useful even when they're wrong. So instead of speaking to highly agreeable audiences, target suggestions to people with a history of originality. No one wants to hear everything that's in your head. They just want you to live up to what comes out of your mouth. Argue like you're right and listen like you're wrong. For startups, there's so much pivoting that's required that if you have a bunch of sheep, you're in bad shape. 